hi children good morning to all how are you all hope all are doing fine and praying to be fine so coming back with a new session continuation of the same topic so we are in the zone of respiration that is a life process one of the life process is respiration in the respiration we discuss types of respiration aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration and we discussed about how the respiration takes place in the human beings different types of respiratory organs their functions their activities and also we discussed up to gaseous exchange how the the main theme of respiration is gaseous exchange how the gaseous exchange is taking place in the lungs we discussed yes or no in the lungs there is a unit structures are called as alveoli these alveoli consists of rich content of oxygen and the blood is consisting of rich content of carbon dioxide so when the blood is reaches to the alveoli the carbon dioxide which is excessive in the blood it diffuses into the lungs and the oxygen which is rich content in the alveoli it will be diffuses into the blood that is nothing but the process of gaseous exchange so up to gaseous exchange we discussed and also how the gaseous exchange is affected by the different uh, effects how it will be affect and how it will causes these are the concepts we come we discussed continuation to that today we are going to discuss about gaseous transport how the gases are transporting how this transportation of gases takes place okay now let us see transport of gases it is the transport of respiratory gases what are the respiratory gases oxygen and the carbon dioxide from alveoli to the systemic tissues and vice versa so coming to the transportation of gases oxygen transport from the lungs to the tissues and carbon dioxide transports from the tissues to the lungs so coming to the oxygen transportation from the lungs to the tissues in a physical solutions blood plasma and also it uh, transportation takes place uh, as a oxyhemoglobin that means when this oxygen reaches to the when the blood reaches to the oxygen it combines with the oxygen and it will be converted in the form of oxyhemoglobin and it will be transported in the form of a oxyhemoglobin coming to the carbon dioxide as a uh, car carbonic acids as carbon carbamino hemoglobin and also as bicarbonates these are the forms how the in different ways the gases will be transported in the blood in the process of respiratory system so let us see oxygen transport in a physical solution in a blood plasma 3% of oxygen is carried by the dissolve dissolving in a plasma how, how much percent 3% of oxygen is carried by the dissolved plasma and as a oxyhemoglobin 97% of oxygen is transported by hemoglobin it is in a red colored iron containing pigment you can see here hemoglobin pigment it is containing red color iron content pigments so that's why the blood is red in color as it having what is the red color pigment nana the red color pigment is is nothing but hemoglobin heme means iron globulin is a, a protein it is a combination of iron and the protein now as a as a hemoglobin oxygen binds with the hemoglobin in a reversible manner to form the oxyhemoglobin so this is called as a oxygenation whenever the oxygen is combines with the hemoglobin it is converts into oxyhemoglobin so uh, combination of oxygen with the hemoglobin is nothing but oxygenation process and now uh, hemoglobin has four heme units four iron units uh, each hemo hb molecule can carry four oxygen molecule as it have a four iron molecules it can carry a four iron molecules the equation is given see hb plus four oxygen molecule reversible reaction hbo4 and o8 molecules it is a reversible reaction you can see now let us see as a hemoglobin binding of oxygen depends on the 
pressure of oxygen and pressure of carbon dioxide hydrogen ions concentration ph and temperature in alveoli there is a high po2 plus low pco2 less h plus ion concentration and a lower temperature these factors favor the formation of oxyhemoglobin so these factors make a favor to the form the oxyhemoglobin that means hb4 plus four oxygen molecules it is a reversible reaction in the lungs and the tissues and it converts in the form of hb4 and o8 molecules hb4 and o8 molecules so in tissues low po2 high pco2 high h plus ion concentration and higher temperature exist so oxyhemoglobin dissociated with the release of oxygen hb plus hb4 plus 4o2 reversible reaction hb4 plus hb4 o so every 100 ml of oxygenated blood can deliver around nearly 5 ml of oxygen it can deliver nearly 5 ml of oxygen to the tissues under the normal physiological conditions under the normal physiological conditions that means for every 100 ml of oxygenated blood it can deliver around nearly 5 ml of oxygen okay 5 ml of oxygen to tissues under the normal physiological condition normal respiratory condition so if you see the action uh, hb4 plus 4o2 reversible hb4 o8 oxygen hemoglobin dissociated curve how it is dissociated it is a sigmoid curve this curve we call it as a sigmoid curve obtained when a percentage saturation of high hemoglobin with oxygen is plotted against the po2 so it is used to study the effect of factors like pco2 h plus concentration etc so uh, binding of uh, oxygen with the hemo ox binding of oxygen with the hemoglobin so as carbonic acid transferring from the tissues so in tissues 7% of carbon dioxide is dissolved in the plasma water from the carbonic acid and they carries to the lungs you can see here so 7% of carbon dioxide is dissolved in the plasma plasma water to form the carbonic acid and carry to the lungs see co2 plus h2o gives a ch h2co3 h2co3 is nothing but it is a carbonic acid as carbon carbamino hemoglobin in tissues 20 to 25% binds of hemoglobin to form the carbamino hemoglobin so in alveoli so in alveoli carbon dioxide dissociated from the carbamino hemoglobin co2 plus hemoglobin nh2 in tissues and in lungs it is a reversible hb nh coh that means carbamino hemoglobin hb nh coh means carbamino hemoglobin as bicarbonates about 70% of carbon dioxide is transported by this method so rbc is contain any an enzyme that is carbonic anhydrase so it is slightly present in the plasma too so as tissues site is facilitates the for following reactions you can see co2 plus h2o gives rise it is a reversible reaction in the presence of carbo carbonic anhydrase h2co2 and double reaction reversible reaction carbonic anhydrase ch3 plus h plus ions will be formed so in alveoli the above reaction proceed in opposite direction leading to the formation of carbon dioxide and water molecules so what happen in alveoli again the reversible reaction what what will be released from there that is a carbon dioxide and a water water vapor so every 100 ml of deoxygenated blood delivers 4 ml of carbon dioxide to the alveoli every 100 ml of 
deoxygenated blood we will release nearly 4 ml of carbon dioxide to the alveoli now regulation of respiration how the respiration is regulated so in brain there are the following respiratory centers so the all the control control and coordination takes place by the brain so you can see here the respiratory centers respiratory rhythm centers pneumotoxic centers and chemosensitive areas the brain consists of respiratory rhythm centers in a brain you can locate the parts respiratory rhythm centers rhythm centers means inhalation and exhalation pneumotoxic centers and the chemosensitive centers so coming to here the seen in a medulla oblongata respiratory rhythmic centers mainly they will be present in the medulla oblongata and it regulates the respiratory rhythms so in the picture you have given the pons pons is the part of a medulla oblongata so at that region the medulla oblongata you can see the picture the part okay good in this part we can see that respiratory rhythms are taking place next one pneumotoxic centers the pneumotoxic centers are seen in the pons so it moderates functions of respiratory rhythm centers impulses from these centers reduces the duration of respiration and uh, thereby alter the respiratory rates so they will alter the respiratory rates next you can see that the chemosensitive centers role of oxygen in the regulation of respiratory rhythm is quite insignificant it is a in quite very insignificant so seen adjacent to the rhythm centers so increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide and h plus ions activates this center which in turn signals rhythm centers so receptors in aortic art and uh, carotid arteries also recognizes the changes in the carbon dioxide and uh, h plus ions concentration and uh, send the signals into the rhythm center what is the reason rhythmic center that is the pons that is a medulla oblongata so how the respiratory mechanism takes place respiration gaseous exchange takes place and transportation of gases how the brain regulates the absorption of the respiratory process controlling of the respiration done by the uh, medulla oblongata or the sensory centers by the uh, brain these we discuss now let us see disorders of the respiratory system what does the what are the different types of disorders we can see in the respiratory system so the disorders of the respiratory system you can see here it is the difficulty in breathing first one is asthma difficulty in breathing causing wheezing due to the inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles bronchi and bronchioles it will be asthma is causes to the bronchi and bronchioles asthma is nothing but causing difficulty in breathing and wheezing due to the inflammation of the bronchi and bronchioles next type of a disorder is aphysma damage of alveolar walls what are alveolar they are the structural functional units of the lungs where the main gaseous exchange takes place in the lungs so damage of alveolar walls and it decreases the respiratory surface and major cause is cigarette smoking majorly it is causes by the cigarette smoking so we will have a, a small uh, visual clip uh, at the end of the class end of the session we will see how the smoking injuries is the health how the people are habituating for the smoke let us see that occupational respiratory disorders so third one is occupational that means uh, by doing uh, uh, in a uh, cotton industries as well as in the smoke industries uh, smoke released industries heat industries uh, jute industries 
they are used to cause a different kinds of a respiratory disorders certain industries produce so much dust so defense mechanism of the body cannot cope with this situation so long exposure causes inflammation leading to the fibrosis so proliferation of fibrous tissues so it result in lung damage it result in the lungs damage work in such industries should protective makes that means wherever we are uh, working this uh, smoke industry smoke releasing industries we should uh, take care complete care uh, from the uh, causing of this damage to the lungs so this is what about different kinds of disorders which are caused by the respiratory organs so the respiration in the, along with the animals as like the animals plants also shows the respiratory respiration how the gaseous exchange takes place in the plants what is the importance of respiration in the plants we'll see so as plants require oxygen for respiration and they also give out the carbon dioxide in case of respiration the plants take inside the oxygen also they release the carbon dioxide plants unlike animals does not have any specialized organs for the gaseous exchange but they have stomata and lenticels for the purpose so the plants have the lenticels and the stomata how we have the lungs same way they have the stomata and lenticels are the respiratory parts in the plants you can find here the lenticels the large stems they have the stomata stomatal pores through the stomata they shows the process of respiration in the leaves we can find a, a pore like a holes they are called as the stomata by the help of stomata they shows the process of respiration so there are several reasons why plants can get along without the respiration organ respiratory organs so each plant part takes care of its own gaseous exchange which is needs for the plant roots stem and the leaves respire at the rate of lower than the animals they do so and also when cells photosynthesize availability of uh, oxygen is not uh, a problem as oxygen is released within the cell in it so uh, the gaseous exchange the oxygen which is liberated during the process of carbon uh, photosynthesis this oxygen may be used by the plants when it is undergoing for the process of a photo respiration process so these gases are may altered uh, they can be exchanged to this side and uh, that side for this process to the that level of the process so plants less active than animals need lower energy requirement plants uh, because they doesn't move here way here and there and uh, where are they are very less active so as they are very less active they need a less amount of energy so gaseous exchange occur mainly in the leaves large surface area to volume ratio by simple diffusion through the stomata and the lenticels by the process of simple diffusion the gaseous exchange takes place through the stomata and the lenticels gaseous exchange can takes place in the presence of a light gaseous exchange will takes place in the presence of the dark also in the plants so the main part is a uh, stomata and the lenticels play the vital role in the plants to the gaseous exchange so during the photosynthesis the carbon dioxide in the air space of the sponge layer fall below the 0.04% so carbon dioxide in the atmosphere gives rise to the stomata from the stomata the sponge layer accepts oxygen in the cells travel to the through the stomata from the stomata as mo at, into the atmosphere so both respiratory and photosynthesis occurs uh, parallelly both activities or the both processes will takes place in these plants so the rate of uh, both process depends on the intensity of the light or the availability of the light the process of photosynthesis mostly depends on the availability of the light so basing on the quantity of uh, participation of photosynthesis the rate of photosynthesis the rate of gaseous exchange also will be depends so respiration alone is taken place less to oxygen inside the sponge layer than the outside so oxygen from the atmosphere gives rise to the lenticels from the lenticels it reaches to the sponge layer 
carbon dioxide from the cell respiration lenticels to the atmosphere they reaches to the atmosphere so in plants also we can see aerobic respiration in plants gaseous exchange can be in investigated in the dark so here what happened glucose combines with the oxygen and gives rise the carbon dioxide and water and energy so see equation formula c6h12o6 plus 6o2 gives rise 6co2 plus 6h2o how much energy is released 2880 kilojoules of energy will be released so carry out through the day and the night the process of respiration the respiration carry out through the day and the night so in the light photosynthesis is faster than the respiration carbon dioxide produced quickly used up by the photosynthesis the carbon dioxide which is used by the photosynthesis and uh, they release the oxygen the pa alternate exchange of gaseous exchange we can find here so coming to the anaerobic respiration in plants occurs when the oxygen absent alcohol alcoholic fermentation so we can see the for preparation of a beer preparation of wine grape wine best example for the plants anaerobic respiration that is a grape uh, uh, grape wine occurs in the certain uh, situation flooding uh, initial stages of germination and the uh, glucose converts into the ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus energy that means c6h12o6 gives rise to the 2c2 plus oh 2c2h5oh plus 2co2 plus 210 kilojoules per mole so example young rice plants this process may takes place in the young rice plants now let us see comparison and contrast uh, contrast respiration and uh, photosynthesis so both are metabolic process aerobic respiration and uh, anaerobic respiration uh, sorry for respiration and uh, photosynthesis both are the metabolic processes that means energy releasing processes okay that is a similarity between the respiration and the photosynthesis coming to the differences a process of catabolism so breaking down of molecules is nothing but it is a catabolic process a process of anabolism is construction of the molecules adding of molecules preparing the food substances no in a process of photosynthesis so it is a anabolic process so occurs in all the living cells anaerobic respiration occurs in all the living cells and occurs in the cell containing chloroplast chlorophyll takes place in the absence and the presence of the light the respiration takes place both presence and absence so for the process of photosynthesis it requires the it requires the light so using uh, glucose and uh, oxygen in process of respiration it will be use the glucose and uh, oxygen and in uh, photosynthesis use the carbon dioxide and the water so what are the products produces the carbon dioxide and the water and it produces the glucose and the uh, the photosynthesis produces the glucose and the oxygen and the respiration the cells loses the weight in the process of respiration photosynthesis the cells will gain the weight because it is a anabolic process chemical energy released in the form of heat and the atp in the process of respiration ikkada uh, coming to the photosynthesis the solar energy uh, released in the form of chemical energy so these are the different parts you can see here the plant organs plant tissues the leaves consists of the pore like a structure we call as a stomata in a stem we can see the respiratory organs they are the lenticels and in a root the root heads these all the acts as the respiratory parts of the plant so this is the process of respiration we'll have a small video clips about the cancer causing by the smoking how the smoke causes the injury we'll see the a small video clip so you can observe in the video how the lungs are what happens to our lungs when we smoke
They turn colorful. No. <laughs> Whenever we smoke cigarettes, we inhale a mix of about 4,000 harmful chemicals. These chemicals cause swelling of bronchial tubes present in our lungs, thus resulting in excess production of mucus. Hmm. Also, they damage hair-like projections called cilia whose function is to push out the excess mucus. As a result, the bronchial tubes get clogged. This leads to persistent <laughs> coughing as our body attempts to clear the mucus, thus eventually causing chronic bronchitis. Hmm. Secondly, these chemicals also damage tiny air sacs called alveoli present in our lungs. This reduces the amount of oxygen entering our blood, thus causing a condition called emphysema. Hmm. Note that chronic bronchitis and emphysema are collectively called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. COPD is irreversible and incurable. Lastly, some of these chemicals can also damage the DNA present in the cells of bronchial tubes and alveoli, thus leading to lung cancer. Why do people smoke? Because they love coffee. No. Teens or young adults start smoking primarily because it feels glamorous and exciting. Watching friends as well as movie actors influences them as well. Cigarettes contain tobacco which contain a highly addictive chemical called nicotine. When taken in, nicotine enters the bloodstream and quickly travels to the brain, releasing feel-good chemicals and removing unpleasant feelings. This helps adult smokers to cope with stress and stay focused. Shortly after completing the cigarette, a smoker starts feeling irritated and anxious. He starts feeling a mild nicotine withdrawal. On smoking the next cigarette, nicotine reaches the brain in less than 10 seconds, instantly giving a pleasant feeling and sense of calmness. This makes it very difficult to stop as the person starts becoming emotionally and mentally dependent on nicotine. This leads to many people becoming chain smokers, needing multiple cigarettes a day. Why smoking makes people look old? So that we look more experienced and intelligent? Nah. Smoking makes people look old because things like cigarettes contain nicotine. Nicotine is a vasoconstrictor, which means it narrows our blood vessels, restricting the blood supply. When the blood supply is restricted, our cells don't get the required oxygen and nutrients. As a result, our skin becomes dry and discolored. In addition to this, the collagen and elastin fibers, which keep our skin firm and elastic, begin to break down much faster leading to saggy and wrinkled skin. Also, when we smoke, we purse our lips and squint our eyes. Regularly repeating these actions may also cause wrinkles in our lips and around our eyes. In this way, smoking makes our skin dry, saggy, and wrinkled, thus making us look old. Hmm. Topic Density Why do firemen crawl in smoke-filled rooms? <laughs> Hey, remember, the upper part of the room will be filled with smoke, so crawl while you are going inside. Ew, I won't. My legs will become dirty. <laughs> Why don't you listen? <laughs> Look, you're not able to breathe properly as you have inhaled a lot of smoke. Hmm. This happened because you did not care about the density of air. <laughs> well... I know all about cavity, but what's this new thing called density? Don't worry, I will explain. <laughs> density is the measure of mass present per unit volume. Oh. Lesser the density, lighter will be the object, and greater the density, heavier will be the object. So in this case, what is lighter, the air or the smoke? Wait, let me think. I guess the answer is smoke? Yes, you are absolutely hmm. correct. Smoke is lighter yeah. than air. As it is lighter, it rises up oh. in the room and occupies the space at the top. Hey, where are you going? It is not over yet. The air being heavier than oh. smoke tends to remain below. <laughs> Hence, if we crawl, we will get sufficient oxygen to breathe and we can safely come out of the room without being suffocated. <laughs> Smoking damages two main parts of your lungs, your airways, also called bronchial tubes, 
and small air sacs called alveoli. With each breath, air travels down your windpipe, called the trachea, and enters your lungs through your bronchial tubes. Air then moves into thousands of tiny alveoli, where oxygen from the air moves into your bloodstream, and the waste product carbon dioxide moves out of your bloodstream. Tiny hair-like projections, called cilia, line your bronchial tubes and sweep harmful substances out of your lungs. Cigarette smoke irritates the lining of your bronchial tubes, causing them to swell and make mucus. Cigarette smoke also slows the movement of your cilia, causing some of the smoke and mucus to stay in your lungs. While you are sleeping, some of the cilia recover and start pushing more pollutants and mucus out of your lungs. When you wake up, your body attempts to expel this material by coughing repeatedly, a condition known as smoker's cough. Over time, chronic bronchitis develops as your cilia stop working, your airways become clogged with scars and mucus, and breathing becomes difficult. Your lungs are now more vulnerable to further disease. Cigarette smoke also damages your alveoli, making it harder for oxygen and carbon dioxide to exchange with your blood. Over time, so little oxygen can reach your blood that you may develop emphysema, a condition in which you must gasp for every breath and wear an oxygen tube under your nose in order to breathe. Chronic bronchitis and emphysema are collectively called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. COPD is a gradual loss of the ability to breathe 